is Heidi Hestrick, and I am going to teach you today about some more bones. This is the third in a four-part video series on a tour of the skeletal system in human beings. And today I'm going to focus primarily on ribs, the sternum, and the vertebrae. So the first video focused on the skull, and the second video on a lot of the long bones in the body. And this one is going to be mostly about the ribs and the vertebrae. If you have not already printed the handout, it's in the description of this video, so just look down under the video. You can print out this handout, get some colored pencils. Uh, you'll need at least six different colors uh, to do this and be able to differentiate between the bones. We're gonna talk about the ribs, and first I wanna start out with just some cool facts about the ribs. Typically, humans have 24 ribs, so we have 12 on the left and 12 on the right. Gorillas have 13 uh, on each side, and sometimes humans have an extra pair, and that's sometimes called gorilla ribs. One thing that's kind of cool and sort of horrifying about the ribs is you can actually break a rib by sneezing too hard. About one in a hundred humans has either an extra set of ribs or a missing set of ribs. So you can assume you have 24 until you have an x-ray telling you otherwise. As far as I know, I have 24. The ribs have the job of protecting your thoracic cavity organs. So primarily they protect your lungs and your heart. Another crazy fact about uh, the rib cage is the sternum. If you ever have open heart surgery, they cut down the middle of the sternum and they use a tool to pry this open and to spread your rib cage apart. And I'll show you a picture. Uh, I think that's kind of terrifying, but it's also pretty cool. Okay, so we're going to talk about the kinds of ribs. There are three different kinds of ribs, and they're classified based on whether or not they connect to the sternum and how much they connect to the sternum. So ribs are numbered starting at the top, the most superior, and ribs number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are all considered true ribs, and that's because the cartilage in those ribs connects directly to the sternum. So you should color code the first seven ribs the same color and label them as true ribs. Three ribs, eight, nine, and ten are considered false ribs. They still have cartilage, and the cartilage ultimately comes up to the sternum, but the cartilage of ribs eight, nine, and ten actually connects to the cartilage of ribs seven, six, and five, rather than directly to the sternum. So those are considered false ribs. Color them a different color and make sure you know those are false. And then finally, we have two extra ribs. Well, they're not extra, I mean they are meant to be there. But if you go down 10, 11 and 12 are considered floating ribs. And you can probably guess why, they're just kind of floating out here. They don't connect in any way to the sternum. If you have an extra rib, it's usually up at the top above rib number one, um, and so attaching to the cervical vertebrae instead of the thoracic vertebrae. Well, that's another full connection between the ribs and the vertebrae. We're gonna get to the vertebrae shortly, but every single rib, remember there are 12, connects to a particular section of vertebrae. Um, so we'll get to that in just a moment. Now let's look at the sternum. The sternum looks like a single bone, but it's really three parts that are fused together, three bones that are fused together. So first, let's color the biggest part of the sternum, and that's in the center. There's a piece above and a piece below. This whole middle piece is called the body. The part above it is called the manubrium, and it looks almost like a shield. And then this tiny piece at the bottom is called the xiphoid process. So together, that makes up the sternum. I've turned Lucy to a posterior view now so that you can better see the vertebrae because the vertebrae are oriented um, to the posterior. The first seven vertebrae are called the cervical vertebrae. And if you've learned your regional terms, it should be easy to remember this. If not, there's a video in a handout for regional terms. We start counting the vertebrae at the superior end. So you count the vertebrae from the one that is up closest to the skull, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And these would be referred to by a surgeon, say, as C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, and C7. 
The next set of vertebrae are the thoracic vertebrae. And again, this relates to the regional term. So this is your thoracic cavity. The entire rib cage, everything in it, front and back, is thoracic. We have 12 thoracic vertebrae, and again, they get numbered and have that letter. So this is T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6, T7, T8, T9, T10, T11, T12. And each one has a rib coming out of each side. So the 12, or the 12 thoracic vertebrae each connects to one of your ribs on each side. Below the thoracic vertebrae are the lumbar vertebrae. And again, this goes with the regional term lumbar region. So your lower back. And there are five lumbar vertebrae. Uh, this is thoracic L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. Finally, we're going to get down here to the sacrum. And it looks like a single bone, the sacrum and the coccyx. And that's because these vertebrae are fused. It takes time for the vertebrae to fuse into a single bone, but they do. So you can't easily see the difference between the bones of this and an adult, but there are five sacral vertebrae, and they are between the lumbar and the coccyx. So the five circle, sacral vertebrae are around here. And then the very last smallest vertebrae are the are the coccyx. It's technically four vertebrae fused together to make the tailbone at the very base of your spine. It has about 220 ligaments just in the spine and about 100 joints. So your spine is super complicated. Add up how many vertebrae you have total. I went through the five different sections, tally those up. And that's how many a typical human has, keeping in mind that sometimes there are slight variations, but it's pretty standard. But your spine is much more than the vertebrae. Lucy does not have the tissue in between the vertebrae on him, but there is cartilage between each vertebrae. And cartilage is a kind of connective tissue. It helps to cushion and protect. Also, the cartilage can expand and contract. So the reason we're able to move our spine without much pain, hopefully, I have a little back pain right now, um, is because of that cartilage. But as we get older, the cartilage tends to wear down. Sometimes these vertebrae even fuse together, um, which is really sad because it can make it very difficult to bend the spine at all. And the word vertebrae actually comes, its etymology comes from the term to turn. So your vertebrae is supposed to allow you to twist and turn and bend but as we get older, that becomes harder, in part because of the breakdown of the cartilage, and in part because sometimes these bones fuse together. I have some more fun facts about the vertebrae. So you know we have seven cervical vertebrae. Think about a giraffe, and try to guess how many cervical vertebrae a giraffe has. Take a moment, don't look it up. Now the cool thing is, a giraffe is a mammal just like a human. And almost every mammal actually has the same number of cervical vertebrae, including a giraffe. It doesn't have any more bones in its neck. They're just much, much bigger. There are animals that have more cervical vertebrae. A swan, which is not a mammal, but a swan has somewhere between 22 and 25. It varies. So they have the most cervical vertebrae of any animal that I can find. In terms of mammals, though, there are only two mammals that have a different number than seven. And those two mammals are sloths and manatees. And sloths can have five to seven, or they can have eight to nine, depending on the species. Manatees, it was really hard to find how many they have. Maybe you can find it and put it in the comments. But it seems like it varies a lot in manatees. It's less consistent. One more fun thing I want to talk to you about today is where are the smallest bones in the human body? So, you can't even see them on Lucy, but the smallest bones in the human body are in the ear. And I'll show you a picture of those bones. You have three bones in your middle ear, and they help to conduct sound. So to take sound from the outer ear and take it to the inner ear so that it can get to the brain. 
Those are very important bones. And again, sometimes we have problems with those bones. They can ossify and that can affect hearing. So it can be a major cause of conductive hearing loss. A lot of bones, we know the common names for them. So it's important to be able to connect the common names with the anatomical terms. So think about which bone you've learned of that is commonly called the breastbone, for example. And you've learned the term now for the wrist bones. So what are those? and the ankle bones. And what do we call the front bone of the lower leg? So this bone right here, what's that called? And what do we call the patella? What's its common name? And another bone that has a common name is this one, the scapula. So what do we commonly call this? So being able to match your anatomical terms to the common terms helps you jump back and forth between the world of medicine and anatomy and the layman's world, um, or talking to regular people. So I hope you liked this video and enjoyed learning about the ribs and the vertebral column. If you haven't, go, you can go back and watch the earlier videos about uh, the skull and the long bones, and I will have one more video posted. Um, it should be up by tomorrow, and it will be primarily about the hands and the feet, because the hands and the feet have so many bones in them and are truly amazing. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.